So I'm going to do a little video here comparing some uh, clutch brake units here. To the right is the old Acura MDX and then to the left is the uh, Russian Gaz 71. I guess starting with the Acura MDX, this is kind of what I first started out with, but the reason I'm not going to use it in the Derp ATV, I was really worried about the duty cycle of the electrical portion. The pretty much the coil that actuates the uh, wet clutch plates that are in here. I wasn't worried too much about the uh, the torque handling capacity of it, but mostly so the electronical portion of it. So I'm going to be saving this guy for the drunk frog because one of the other issues with this unit is it spins opposite to most uh, manufacturer ro engine rotations because Honda is a little bit different in their uh, engine rotations. They like to go clockwise than counterclockwise like most engine manufacturers out there but that's all right i think it'll be a good unit for the drunk frog uh this portion right here was all built by me and i just kind of it's just kind of like a, a subframe that bolts up to the Acura mdx so that way you can mount your calipers and then you also get a good mounting surface here or uh, mounting holes so you can bolt it onto your frame i might sell like plans or something for this in case anyone else is interested in doing this as well. There's also a little uh, a bolt bolt ring there for your uh, disc rotors. Same thing goes in there. Turned out pretty good in my opinion for being, you know, dumb iron for the most part. No machining involved, so. But yeah, with this unit I would have had a uh, an electrical portion that would actuate the clutches. And then I have a, uh, a hydraulic portion that actuates the uh, disc, you know, the disc brakes. And I did end up keeping that same format for controls onto the Gas 71, which I'll explain later. But uh, to solve the issue of rotating uh, backwards than most engine manufacturers, I imported some uh, final drives as well. So that'll give me some good leverage to give me good life on that. Acura MDX axle and I also imported the sprockets as well these were actually pretty cheap they were about a hundred bucks USD you know and uh, I don't think I could have paid a machine shop to turn those things down for a hundred bucks especially if you're just making two of them so definitely worth that in my opinion especially since I'm just going to be utilizing this portion I'm going to make this out of lawn art I guess that'll just turn the lawn art but uh, these are actually nice, pretty nice units in my opinion. The only downfall was the uh, the drive, which you know I'll just cut the center out and then I'll use that. So, but that's kind of uh, on a tangent there. Moving on to the uh, old Russian Gas 71 transmission here. Really nothing much to say. I mean, it's built like a Kalashnikov. It's pretty simple and uh, crude. I'll give them that. The only thing I was a little disappointed is these are remanufactured units. Even though the seller kind of... Uh, he kind of hinted that they're more mostly new. But when you go in here... Um, you can kind of see there's that chip on that pinion gear there. I don't know if you can see that with the light, but... There is a chip on the pinion, so it's definitely a used unit. I mean, I'll probably run it as is. I'm going to try to make a deal here with the seller, see what he can do, because I haven't paid him his full money yet. So hopefully that's a good incentive to uh, right this wrong that's been going on. But it is made for a 14,000 pound Russian track layer, and it's going in a 3,000 pound wheeled machine, so it might be all right in the as-is condition. The actual construction itself, you kind of saw in there, there's a uh, spiral bevel gear set that pretty much transfers your input to 90 degrees on a solid cross shaft, which then splits it on two clutch brake uh, packs right here, I guess you call them. The, uh, the clutches and the brakes are set up kind of like a dozer where there's a clutch basket that's inside the actual uh, brake drum. And there's like nine steel on, or excuse me, 18 steel on steel friction plates. There's nine driven and then there's nine driving. 
And the driven ones are actually uh, meshed into the brake drum with some splines. To uh, disengage the clutches, there's this throwout arm here that rotates on a ball ramp. So when you turn this, the balls, they go up on like a ramp, which then pushes the coil springs out, which then separates your clutch plates, which obviously allows the clutch to slip after that. And to actuate this throwout arm, I'm using linear actuator, so that means I can keep my same electrical control format that I was going to use on the MDX. So that kind of worked out for me. And then the uh, braking system, I'm just keeping the stock band brakes for now. I'll probably eventually move over to a disc brake system in the future. But just to get things going, I'm just going to use the stock band brakes. I just got some uh, cheap clutch slave cylinders here, which I'll plumb into my controls. So, uh, one thing to note too is I did invert the bell crank. Usually the bell crank is located up here, and then the adjustment bolt is down here, kind of like what you see on this one over here. Because on the Gas 71, they're usually being pulled to actuate the brakes, but in my case, I'm actually pushing. So. Um, I think that's about it. I mean, it's a pretty simple unit. The actual output shafts... Actually, I don't think I'm going to need to use my output shafts because I did buy some of these as well. So these are the output shafts that would go to the uh, final drive in a standard GAS 71 format. But these actually would slide right into there. And then these are just some couplers that kind of gets splined up into that guy right there, so. I'm guessing you have to grease them just to keep the spline wear to a minimum. And all this gobbledygook is just adjustment. Right now I, I don't have the brake bands adjusted. You gotta have a certain uh, clearance on certain parts of the bands. You know, because right now it's like, there's, there's a lot of dragging going on. I guess to kind of show you how the uh, linear actuator stuff works, really what I did is I built this frame over here. Just It gets welded onto this cross tube that gets inserted into the aluminum casting. So this is a steel piece right here that I welded onto. It's not like it's aluminum or anything crazy exotic. So right now we're in the disengaged position. That's the clutches engaged. And that's the clutches disengaged. Now my battery is kind of low, so it'll be a little bit faster than that, but that's kind of the gist of it. I think it'll work out pretty good. And plus, this is the same uh, setup that the Sherp uses. The Sherp actually uses components of this GAS 71. They don't use the entire casing or anything crazy like that but they do utilize the uh, clutch baskets, part of the drums, and they do utilize the cross shaft as well. So it's good enough for the Sherp, it's uh, good enough for the Derp.